Hello, and welcome to Podcasting in the Classroom. I'm Kate Meyer, one of five MLTI ambassadors. My job as an ambassador is to provide instructional coaching and professional learning around digital citizenship, technology integration, and digital instructional design to teachers in the state of Maine. My role as an MLTI ambassador is a two-year position. Prior to my work as, a, as an ambassador, I spent 21 years as an English teacher and a design thinking teacher, mainly at Mount Desert Island High School in Bar Harbor. And when my two-year appointment as an MLTI ambassador is finished, I'll return back to my classroom. I'm so excited that you're here today to learn about podcasting in the classroom. Together, we're going to explore what podcasting is and how to get your students creating podcasts in your classroom. So let's jump into what are podcasts and why should we include them in the classroom? Did you know that 33% of people who don't listen to podcasts aren't even sure about how to get started? By the end of today's session, not only will you have the resources to get your students listening to podcasts, but you'll also have everything that you'll need to get them creating them too. Podcasts are audio programs, just like talk radio that you can subscribe to and listen to whenever you want. When we're talking about podcasts, we're talking about a series of episodes. A podcast episode is a single recording from an entire podcast. You can subscribe to podcasts via your favorite podcast app. I happen to love Spotify and the Apple podcast app. They also happen to be the two most popular apps for listening to podcasts, but listeners also listen on YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple iTunes, and the podcasts that are embedded in websites that they visit. Podcasts are episodic or ongoing. Weekly releases are common, but some are daily, and really, anything goes. Most podcasts will be themed around a topic that the hosts talk about every episode. There's no predetermined length, format, style, production level, or anything else. Podcasts are movement enabling and screen free. Get your students up and walking while listening to podcasts. I love it when the weather's great and we can walk around the track at the school while we listen. Or sometimes we pull out the colored pencils and paper and we sketch note while we listen. Podcasts are great for screen free learning experiences. And podcasts are about any topic under the sun. And did I mention they're free? Did you know that one in four kids listen to podcasts? And most podcasts that they're listening to are music podcasts. They're still the favorite across all ages with a total of 40% of kids who listen to podcasts listening to this genre. There are so many podcast formats. This information that I'm going to share with you actually comes from a web page called Eight Podcast Formats for you to consider for your show. I'm going to share the five formats that I actually end up introducing to my students. The first is the solo format. This podcast format is fairly common. It's used by people who have a specific kind of expertise that they want to share. There isn't a lot of fanfare or setup to do a solo show. The podcaster simply talks into the microphone. Many new podcasters start with this format because it's so simple. All one needs to get started is a microphone and some free editing software. Some podcasters are comfortable ad-libbing off of a few notes, but others have a hard time talking for 30 to 45 minutes without detailed preparation. So the podcaster might decide to write a complete script for each episode. The next format that I introduce to my students is the interview format. An interview style show features a host or maybe two who interviews a new guest in each episode who brings their unique expertise and experience. After a brief guest introduction, the host takes over asking questions to guide the conversation around the episode's topic, working to unpack their guests' stories and lessons. Since each guest is different, it's really best if your podcast sticks to a simple, excuse me, central theme to keep the show cohesive. The next format that I share with my students is the co-hosted format. This is another common podcast format. It involves two people having a straightforward conversation, and these two people generally have a really great chemistry together. Unlike the interview podcast format, however, these two people are both hosts. In many cases, each host will play a specific role in the conversation. One might report a news snippet while the other provides commentary or comedy. One might teach lessons while the other tells stories from their own experience. 
I then introduce my students to the panel format. A panel podcast is similar to an interview podcast, but with more people. Each episode has a single host and a group of guests. For your listener, it feels like overhearing an organic conversation between friends. My students generally choose this format the very first time that they're doing podcasts. They like that the talking is spread out over four or five other people and that everyone can be an expert on their own niche part of the conversation. And the final format that I share with my students is the theatrical format, also known as fictional storytelling. These are fictional stories told across one or multiple episodes, similar to dramatic television. Some are narrated by a single voice. Others use multiple voice actors, sound effects, and other audio elements. Just like other modalities that tell stories like TV shows, movies, and audiobooks, these podcasts use tension, climaxes, and cliffhangers to tell their stories. This is a great format for creative types who like to create characters, weave plots, and build fictional worlds. Jennifer Gonzalez, author of the Cult of Pedagogy blog and podcast, is a huge proponent of podcasting in the classroom. She has a podcast episode all about why podcasts are an important media to bring to all of our classrooms, and I've linked it here on this slide. Gonzalez tells us that the research all shows the same thing. Better listeners are better readers. Listening improves our language comprehension, which is also a key component of strong reading skills. Think about how we acquire our very first language. It's through listening to our parents or caretakers speak to us as infants. The science supports the fact that the awareness of sounds that make up our spoken language is critical. So it makes sense that listening helps our students hear grammar and syntax. Incidental exposure to vocabulary through listening and reading together, for example, if students follow along using the transcript of a podcast while listening, helps students learn the meanings of unknown words and improves reading rates, leading to higher comprehension. Also, our brains are busy making movies in our minds while we are listening. We're not just passively absorbing information. We're activating the systems in our brains that are responsible for sight, sound, motor control, and olfaction. And getting into a flow while listening helps our social emotional well-being as well. Being absorbed in a story or a podcast positively impacts our psychological safety and reduces our social anxiety. And of course, we can learn new things by listening to podcasts. Three in four podcast listeners report that they listen to podcasts in order to learn new things. So how might I incorporate podcasts and podcasting into my classroom? Just as there are thousands of podcasts at our fingertips, there are just as many ways to incorporate podcasts and podcasting into your classroom. I'm going to share with you how I have used podcasts and podcasting in my classroom, and then later I will share some resources that will help you develop the perfect podcasting experience for your students. I began podcasting with my students about five years ago and quickly decided that it would become an essential part of my course as I realized that podcasting empowered my students by giving them the space to tell their stories as it connected to the content that we were studying. There's nothing that I want more than for my students to feel empowered and now podcasting has a permanent place in my curriculum. The very first thing I do in my podcasting unit is to find podcasts to use as mentor texts, as many students are not familiar with podcasts. My podcasting unit is embedded in my American Dream unit, so I have a collection of five to six podcasts that are thematically connected. My students spend time listening to podcasts during class time, in small groups, discussing the content as it relates to our study. They also analyze the podcast elements and determine what they like and dislike about how each podcast was produced, just like what I do with any other mentor text, but we focus specifically on podcast elements, intros and outros, segments, how music is used to set the mood and tone, how interviews are conducted and used. We mix up how we listen to them. Sometimes we read along using transcripts, sometimes we sketch note, sometimes we take walks. There are podcasts about almost everything that will fit in all content areas. If you happen to be watching this before the summer, my suggestion is that you use some of your summer to curate podcasts and episodes that relate to topics that your students study in your course. That way, you'll have mentor texts all ready to go in the fall.
I spend a lot of my summer um, in my garden, lots of time weeding, um, you know, pulling up the weeds and listening to podcasts. Again, podcasts can be listened to anywhere. So think about times when you could take a walk, take a drive, weed your garden, and start curating lists of podcasts to share with your students. I then have my students plan their own podcast episode. I use a template from Betsy Potash's Spark Creativity podcast and blog, and I'll link that for you in the resources. Students determine the format and topic that connects thematically to our study, and they identify their target audience. They then use Canva to create their podcast cover. They write an outline for their episode, including any research and interviews that they might need to do. They also create brief descriptions about what their next two episodes would be about if they were to record a series of episodes. I'm going to show you what that looks like in the next slides. And then it's time to start creating the content editing and publishing. I use the platform Anchor when I do podcasting with my students. I love Anchor because it's simple and all the editing tools that students need are built right into the platform. Students can access it from any device because it is web-based and there is an iPad app, which some of my students prefer. Because the app is so simple, I don't have to dive very deeply into the technical aspects of editing that a tool like GarageBand might include. But I've also had students choose to use GarageBand because they happen to love that platform. And that, of course, works for me, too. At the end of this presentation, I'll share a few apps and platforms that educators most commonly use for podcasting so that you can find the perfect tool for your students. I give students class time to work on producing their podcasts, including time to conduct their interviews and do all the editing and publishing that needs to be done. They then publish those podcasts into a shared Google Slides deck. This is a screenshot from that shared Google Slides deck. So what you're looking at is um, a student created slide where they have published their podcast. And this happened to be created last year by one of my student groups. You can see that they use Canva to create their cover art. They have a hyperlink for their episode number one, and they've got a great show description. I'm actually going to read that to you. Their show description says, in this series, through the lens of iGen, we explore how one's background affects their conception and experience with the American dream. We include information gathered from interviews, classic American literature, and analysis of raw statistics and personal experiences to answer this question as inclusively as we are able to. Similar to generations before us, we have read Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby, deepening our understanding of, the, of older generations while developing our own ideas. We are now able to add our voice to this conversation and hope you enjoy. Disclaimer. Between the four of us, we tend to share relatively similar views and only represent a small portion of Gen Z. Please do not assume that we are using our voices to claim Gen Z's collective ideas and opinions. I just want to share with you that this group of 16-year-olds wrote this, including the disclaimer, all on their own. This was one of those moments where I got out of my students' way and really just allowed them to create. Because we had used uh, five to six podcasts as mentor texts, students had read through descriptions, they had seen them, they were familiar with them. And then once I got out of their way and let them do what they needed to do, um, they came up with these really incredible descriptions. And then the students create the coming soon section. My requirement here is that they simply title the next three episodes as if they were going to produce them. This group, however, decided that they wanted to create four short podcast episodes instead of one long podcast episodes. I asked my students to aim for about 20 minutes, so they decided to break it up that way. And so you can see here, there are four hyperlinks that take us to live podcast episodes. I then give my students all a link to a Padlet where their peers and family members share feedback about their podcast after they've listened to it. On the day that the podcasts are due, we do have a publishing party, um, you know, food and drinks, and we spend lots of the whole class period um, listening to all of the different groups' podcasts and then giving them feedback. And then they determine who else they're going to share those podcasts with, and the sharing just continues. So they are working with real audiences, which really is just another um, really beautiful part of the podcasting process. 
This is just another example of the template that students fill out to publish their podcast. You can see this group tackled their podcast a little differently. They went with more of an interview interview based format and they recorded two episodes. They didn't use Canva to create their cover art. Instead, they used a drawing that one of their group members did um, specifically for their cover art. You can see that their upcoming episodes are not recorded, just titled, so that you can get a sense of how this podcast would flow. I love seeing what they come up with for their aspirational episodes, and I found these two particularly interesting. Again, when you step back and get out of their way, um, what they create is really amazing. So like I said before, just as there are thousands of podcasts, well, really millions, to listen to, there are just as many ways to incorporate them into your classroom and practice. So here are my top five. The first is classroom content connections. Find podcast episodes or clips within episodes that connect to your course's content and listen to them together to learn something new. Podcasts are also a great way to communicate with parents and the community. You can create a basic podcast template that follows the same structure um, and then send home links to short podcast episodes uh, that are teacher or student produced. Podcasts are also great alternatives to written assessments. As an English teacher, I need to teach and assess speaking and listening, including student discussion skills. So podcasts are a great way to do that. I also teach and assess standards around synthesizing multiple sources. This is often done via an essay, but it doesn't have to be because podcasters use this skill too. Think about how students can use podcasts in your classroom to demonstrate their content area knowledge. Students share things. Students can also use podcasts to share things that are important to them, to tell their own stories. This is a great way to do classroom community building as you build your community of learners. And finally, you can use podcasts for your own professional development. My top four podcasts for educational professional development are Spark Creativity, Cult of Pedagogy, The House of EdTech, and The Creative Classroom with John Spencer. There are so many podcasts um, for educators in every content area. So I'm confident that you will find some that speak to you too. And you can also try creating your own podcast with colleagues. Currently, there are 2,434,692 valid podcasts consisting of over 64 million episodes. Current estimates project that listeners in the U.S. could increase from 89 million to over 100 million by 2024. So this is likely a modality that our students will encounter after they leave school. Just one more reason that we should be getting our students consuming and creating podcasts. So let's check out some resources that I've curated for you to get you started on your own podcasting journey. If you happen to be part of that 33% of non-listeners who don't know where to get started listening to podcasts, you could try a podcast from this list. These are aimed mostly at an adult audience, and they're not all appropriate for the classroom, although I do know a lot of teachers who use episodes from This American Life, Stuff You Should Know, and Serial in their classrooms. This list of the top 10 most listened to podcasts is a great place for you to start your own listening journey. On this slide, I have collected resources for you to help find podcasts to listen to with your students. My colleague, John Graham at the DOE, has created an incredible resource with podcasts geared toward pre-K through grade five listeners. It's a little tricky sometimes to find podcasts that's geared toward that particular audience. So if that's the audience that you work with, definitely check out this resource because it is an incredible grid filled with hyperlinks to podcasts just for these very young listeners. The next seven links are all links to curated lists of podcasts that are produced for students. So they're all great for a deep dive. And the final two links are to platforms that will help you discover even more content for your students. You can search Kids Listen and Listen Wise for content that's connected right to your content area. This slide is all about getting ready to help your students produce their own podcasts. The first link is specifically for students. This resource by NPR will help your students in grades 7 through 12 navigate everything they need to know about producing their own podcasts. 
the next three links are resources that will help you develop your own podcast lesson or unit. I started using, I started out using the first link, the easiest way to help students record and publish podcasts from Betsy Potash. And she is not kidding. She has really put together the easiest way to get started. The graphic organizers that I shared earlier are from Betsy's work, and you'll find a link to her podcasting unit in this resource. And if you just want to dive into creating podcasts with your students, this is the resource that I would use. The links from NPR and New York Times are incredible, extensive, and thoughtful units that you can use with your students. They are great if you're looking for lots of details. I highly recommend both of these resources. And while I haven't used either one in its entirety, I pull parts and pieces from them each time I podcast with my students. In fact, both NPR and New York Times hold annual student podcast challenges. Both are great places to find student created podcasts to use as mentor texts because they publish the winners and the runners up. And my students love these podcast episodes because they are students just like them. And it might be a great way for your students to participate in podcasting with a huge audience. And finally, I have two links that are all about apps and platforms that educators are using to get their students creating amazing content. I'm confident that you'll find the perfect tool for your students in one of these two links. Take a design thinking mindset and encourage your students to do the same. Try everything. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and learn from them and go in your own creative direction. There is no wrong way to do podcasting. Podcasting with my students is one of the activities that I do where I really let students take the lead and become the experts because when I get out of their way, they just create amazing content. I know that you're going to be amazed by what your students create too. Thank you so much for joining me today. There will be a link to the slide deck um, in the description of this video, so you'll have access to everything that I've shared with you today. I'm also including a link here to the MLTI YouTube channel where you can find great videos from all the MLTI ambassadors. And finally, there's a link to the feedback form. Once you complete that, you'll be given a link to a certificate for professional development hours. Thanks again for joining me. Please don't hesitate to reach out via email if you'd like to talk more about how to incorporate podcasts and podcasting into your own curriculum.